To get started with the lighting, I'm going to go to shading and we're going to go to world and then we're going to change the background color to be a bit darker. So we'll go and add a hue saturation node right in between the texture and the background node. We'll lower the value maybe to about 0.2. And then maybe we could even adjust the hue a little bit. That would be way too much. So maybe like 0.47. That might be nice. Not a huge difference, but maybe you might like it a little bit better this way. Next, we need to go ahead and add like some lighting in the interior so that when you look at it, it looks like the interior is lit up. And it'd be nice to draw some attention to the window. So we'll go ahead and add a plane. I already have my 3D cursor here, so we'll just add a plane with Shift A, add plane. And we'll tab into edit mode, rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees, so R, Y, 90. We'll assign the emissive material we had. I'll rename it emissive for the lanterns. And we'll drag it inside we basically want it to take up all the space so we'll make it nice and big like that and if we press zero we should hopefully not see the back of it but we might want to bring it back a bit so that it's lighting the wood and we see the wood instead so if we were to go into cycles for a quick preview I'll set cycles, GPU compute if you have it set in your preferences. And then I'll turn on viewport denoising to open image denoise. And then I'll go and press Z and move up to go to render view. Yeah, and that could look cool. Go back to material preview. Next, I want to change up these lights a bit. I think I'll change the emissive material into a different glass material. So press this to make new material, call it glass. We'll change the surface to glass BSDF. We'll get rid of this black body node to have it be just a white color. We might attach an image texture to the roughness, but that might be a little bit easier in the shading tab. Object. Hit Shift A, add image texture. Then we want that grunge material we had before to make it dirty. Into the roughness. But that looks like it's too much, so we might want to have like a color ramp in the middle and just kind of like adjust it a little bit. It should be mostly smooth, but a little bit dirty. So we'll lower that to a gray. So we'll improve the UVs by selecting here, control selecting here, U, unwrap, here, here, here. And it might be a little bit hard to see here, so we can press slash to isolate. And then press U. Unwrap. Select. Control select. U. Unwrap. So now we have the glass mapped a little bit better. Maybe we might want the roughness to have more variation. It's a little small. Just a little bit more. After that, we could add a flame inside there. So we'll go to, back to the layout tab. Press shift right click to select around there. Then shift A, add sphere, UV sphere. Maybe go and shrink this 
se segments amount is like 16 and 8. Then we'll tab into edit mode and scale it down real small. And then we can zoom in, select this top point, and then use proportional editing by pressing this or pressing O, and press G and Z. Now the cursor might be a little bit too big, so you can use the scroll wheel and scroll up on it to shrink the size. So you can just move it, G, maybe rotate a little bit. Maybe scale it a little bit. Get something that looks a little bit like a flame. You can right click, hit shade smooth, and then choose the material as emissive. And then if you press Z and go into wireframe, you can just drag this up with G and Z. Then G, shift Z, try to put it around the center. Maybe up a little bit more. If you ever accidentally move in the wrong mode and have the origin in the wrong place, you can just right click and set origin to center of mass or volume. Then I can press shift S cursor to selected and hit shift A, add a light, point light. On our light, settings we can press use nodes and we can change the color to a black body node and then we can go back to wireframe shift select the flame if we can get it we'll select the flame first actually and then we can rename it flame and then we can select our light and hit alt d and just drag it to the same place in the other lamp. Now I noticed that I accidentally had the wall a little bit above and so do I have the pillars a little bit above the surface so some of the light from inside is going to be leaking out. So I'll just tab into edit mode. I'll use correct face attributes to make sure that I have the UVs going with it. So I'll alt left click and that should grab the entire bottom. And then I can just press G and Z and drag it down. I can also drag the floor up a little bit to get it closer to some of these pillars and frames. And now we can preview that with cycles on. So I will go and press Z and go into render view. I should also move the chair up a little bit because I moved the floor up a little bit. And now we can adjust some of the render settings. I want it on cycles, GPU compute if you can. I'll keep it at the default render samples of 128. It might be a good idea to increase that if you want to have better results. I'll set the denoising to open image denoise in the render. You can maybe go to light paths and drop the max bounces total to six or so. Then if you go to this little printer icon, you can set your resolution. Make sure you like it. We'll keep at the default of 1080p here, 1920 by 1080. And then you can go down another layer to this set of passes, which are the three images. And we want the mist pass and maybe the cryptomat material pass and save. We'll then just hit F12 and wait for it to render. Now that we have our render, we can go ahead and go to the compositing tab and try compositing it. And we can try to improve the way it looks. So we'll click on use nodes. And then I'll delete that composite node and press shift A, split viewer. You can drag the image into one of them, maybe the other one. And you can see what it looks like before, and then we'll have a be 
the ability to have a before and after by plugging in the results of our modifications into the other one. I'll hit control space to get bigger and maybe press N view fit to make sure that this takes up the whole space. I'll get started by using the crypto mat which you have to plug in the crypto material 00, 0, 1, and 0, 2. And the image. If you control shift left click on this and do it a couple more times, you will be able to get the mask colors for all the different materials. So I thought maybe it might look nicer if we have the snowman be a little bit more visible since it's blends in with the background a bit so we'll make it a little bit more white and brighter so we'll use this add and select the snowman material and then if i drag this back we can add a hue saturation node plug the image from the crypto mat into the image here and then get the mix node and plug the modified version into the bottom and this one at the top. And we can plug that in to our result. If we slide it, we can see what happens. If I change the hue, you'll see that the entire thing changed. So we need to use this little guy, this little use transparency and only our snowman will change. So we'll change that back to 0.5 and we'll just maybe increase the value a bit and make him a bit more easy to see and brighter. Can maybe even change the saturation a little. Make it a little more saturated or a little less saturated. Maybe a little less, stands out a little bit more. Could even change the hue slightly. And then you can go ahead and repeat this process with some other materials to get some more fine tuned results. We can drag these up and try to kind of separate them a bit. Hit Shift A, add a frame, and just drop every one of these into that frame. And we can hit F2 and rename this frame to Snowman Man Crypto Mat. And you can maybe hit Shift, right click, and drag a line over here and press G to move that in a little bit farther into there and get a little bit more out of the way. Maybe we might want to have our lights look like they glow a bit so if we use the glare node we can add it it adds streaks by default we might want to go with more of a fog glow so if i hit m to mute that you'll see that it adds just a little bit of a glow around the light areas it basically just blurs areas that are more than 100 percent brightness and adds that on top of the image and then maybe we might even want to add some fog or a mist effect so if we go and use a mix node, you can mix the result from the glare into your mix node, plug it in. Then you can drag the mist value into the factor. And then you can maybe adjust this color to be a little bit more of like a light blue. Maybe a little bit more. And that looks really nice, but I think it's a little bit too strong. So we'll go and hit shift a and add a math node and we'll change it to multiply. And we'll drag the miss value into there and then drag it into the factor. And then it should be a bit weaker and you can compare the results. 
maybe a little bit smaller, like 0.4, have just a little bit of a nice fog effect in your scene. I think that looks pretty nice. You can add more effects such as a color balance node to tweak the colors of it a bit to your liking. Maybe add a little bit more warmth to some of those lights. And more cool to the other areas. And we can hit M to mute that and compare. I think I think it looks nice without it though. You can add these two nodes to their own frame by hitting shift A, search frame, and dropping them in. And then hey F2 and call it fog. So if you want to save it, you can just drag the factor all the way to show only your composited image. And then if you go to an image editor, you can go and go to your viewer node image and then image save as. If you like this video and want to see more Blender videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.